Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers this morning is Shola Omolayo. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and good morning, Nigerians. Good morning to you. All right, so uh, we'll begin with the Vanguard, and I'm sure this is a story that you already know because all Nigerians are facing this. And the Vanguard leads with anger as petrol price goes up third time in two months. There are a lot of writers here, but let me take all the other headlines on um, the other papers. Um, on uh, The Guardian, it says, More pains for Nigerians as PMS hits 1,000 naira per litre threatens survival. On the Daily Trust, it says NLC demands petrol price hike reversal. Federal government denies involvement as NNPCL adjust costs above 1,000 naira per litre. It is unbearable, and that is what the citizens are saying. And new pricing unfavorable to us, and that is called according to Ipman. Now, on the punch, it leads with 1,030 naira per litre um, price. The NLC demands reversal as fuel queues resurface. Petrol nears 1,300 per litre in states as NNPC hikes pump price again. APC opposition clash. I want to get your take on this because this is this is the third time in two months we've seen this price hike. You know, when we think it's worse, it gets worse. <laughs> According to how Gen Zs would say it, um, but we're seeing this, and it's not something to even laugh about because we understand the the ripple effect of this. With petrol, it is a product that almost everybody would use. You're using it for your vehicles. You're using it as an alternative, um, uh, you know, source of power. And then, if it's this price, of course, it's going to prices of goods and services are going to go high astronomically, and we'll see inflation even come up again. What's your take on why the NNPCL is increasing this price, and what the federal government's plan is for Nigerians? Because at this point, we don't even know. When you say what's my take. I was wondering how to start mm. because you say it's a laughing matter. Yeah. But I, I felt is it because I'm smiling. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. You see, I I see a country where the leaders and the people are really confused. They don't know what they ought to give to their people. And the people themselves don't know what they want. Mm. This increment is not a big deal, you know. And Nigerians are ready for whatever is coming to their truth. They will swallow it. They will just make noise. Noise, noise. They will swallow it. And they've, they've, they've already swallowed it anyway. Mm. See, when we have these increments there, like last year, this year, mm. almost. There was no vehicle on the road. Though. Everybody left the road. I thought, wow, Nigerians. I know we are joking. I was just laughing. We thinking when things like this happen, I laugh. Mm. Few weeks later, oh, dog, don't they again? I say, my people, my people, mm -hmm. we don't know what we want. The last increment that seems as if heaven is going to fall, with all the quacking and raking of. The, the, uh, the organized labor that are not organized. You will, you will see with your eyes as the third mainland is as free as a ghost land. But what do you see today? My people are back. You don't need to worry yourself anymore. Just pitch your tent in a corner where you know suits you. If you think that people know what they want, is a lie. The leaders, do they know what to offer the people is a lie. Do I want to say we are living in a confused state? I would say, I don't know. Are we living in a privatized system of government? I can I say yes, because this is the real animal farm, the real animal farm, where some animals are greater than the other. This increment started in 1973 from six cobble. My sister, do you know cobble? 
<laughs> of course, I do. You know, come back. Yes, sir. Yes, I do. Okay. Mm. I hope you this new bridge couple that you are talking of. <laughs> the one that is designed. <laughs> yes, sir. Cobble. Cobble to Luluji. Do you know that cobble? It was from six cobble mm. to eight cobble in 1970. And now we're Down talking over a thousand naira. <laughs> You see what? I said, and now we're talking over a thousand yes. naira. In fact, from Kobo to, yeah, from Kobo. Babangida transformed the petrol price from Kobo to naira. Can you beat that? Okay, so what's the way forward now? Today, what do you think that the government needs to do? Okay. Way forward. Yes. Where is the way forward? Is it? Where? I keep telling you. Or keep telling us if we don't have that right leader who is ready to pay the price, the sacrificial price that we is ready to face the capitalist that has held this nation in the neck, we're going nowhere. Mm. Shabby, the other time you were celebrating, we asked uh, me, I'm not a bubble. People were celebrating that hotel refinery. I went that hotel start work now. We were deceived. The past government went as far. The president went as far as commissioning a private refinery at the detriment, the mockery of our national refinery. Yeah. And Nigerians were part of this celebration. We will ne never see anything. You are dealing with somebody who is so who is a capitalist, a monopolistic human being. Huh. Join him with a group of People who manipulated Nigerian government, Nigerian company, and the Nigerian business to a private company called NNPCL, I mean NNPC, uh, whatever, turning into a private company, and we are celebrating this thing. Excuse me, why are we so concerned about that good refinery if you think the people are serious and the government knows what they are doing? Hmm. And NNPC are telling us our refinery is going to start operation since last. Yeah. yeah, it's going to start a open in April. It moves to July, to August, to November. We started it again, and we are not even talking about our own refinery again. Then, what is the waste? This is a refinery that so much is wasted on. You told us you got into ninety percent of the completion of the of the project, mm. and some people who know the. We're telling us that this company is owing money. You said you were not owing, and you are declaring profits. And no, no, no government institution is challenging this group of individuals mm. as a a, 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 a a network that determines this, the, 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 the safety of the nation. So there's a story on the Daily Trust that you know would interest you, and it says. NNPCL, NPA, NATI, 507 others score low in transparency and accountability. And that is a report. So it's here on the Daily Trust. But, you know, you're just speaking about the NNPCL. And even the World Bank have accused the NNPCL of not being transparent. And they're the ones who are kind of like setting the prices. So anything that happens, it comes from the top, which is the NNPCL. How do you think that the government needs to respond to what is going on with this report here where NNPCL, who is a major player in the country, you know, scores so low in transparency and accountability. So we don't even know how much crude we have, how much is being sold. We don't have any idea on what is going on with that company. How do you think the government needs to respond now, especially if we're saying that we want a better Nigeria and we want a situation whereby the price of PMS is more affordable for, for everyone? Who are the members of trustee of NNPCL as a company? Where you have a minister also in charge of such a business. What constitution guides such a business? So which of the transparency you are talking about? Look, we have a woven, a, an interwoven situation in our hands, and we don't even understand it. We are all confused. We are all confused. I see Nigeria, and I see the Nigerians of this side, and the Nigeria of Bolaige, 
who sees the five fingers or uh, who sees the five finger leprosy and chooses to sit down and look that is a mess with finance um, you see an institution a private a two private institution nmpcl and dangote refinery at a time working together conspiring against the nation and they made us to see this thing but we we, we are so dumb nobody's asking fighting for his own life at this juncture they are tying us up like they are tying robbers hmm. to the drum in the days when they kill people we kill robbers in uh, uh, at down Beach. they are tying us up we are not even stopping we are not shouting we are not screaming so what are we saying how, all right how, who is going to who is going to who is going to give us a picture of this uh, expedition who is going to give us a picture of this thing who is the private here is it the dangote refinery now or nnpcl you see a concrete of cracks the nnpcl who's supposed to be standing on behalf of the people defending nigerians denying a, a purchase from dangote they were saying they, they got this at this price the one you call a private a refinery is saying the government is lying. Mm -hmm. Or the individual, I mean, the collecting okay. arm of a business is lying, which is an I, I, I And nobody is challenging you. Yeah. I think we've even said a lot on this. It's quite unfortunate that we are an oil producing nation, but yet we have to pay this, you know, very high price on petrol. Well, meanwhile, our counterparts like Libya, I think it's about 52, 52 naira if you convert it to naira per liter there. But here we are, a giant of Africa, and then we have to spend so much on this product and our refineries are not working it's quite unfortunate but i want to digress from that a little bit on the guardian it says well it's world mental health day today so on the guardian it says frustration hardship sink more nigerians into depression there are like a few stats here it says life expectancy life expectancy for nigerians right now is 56 so 56 years is a life of expectancy for nigerians because obviously of our standard of living uh, multi-dimensionally poor people about 63 percent um, that comes to poverty when it comes to social problems inflation is about 32 percent um, natural disaster we've seen flood victims about 1.8 million unemployment rate is 5.3 percent and more nigerians now have to borrow to feed so health facilities see 200 percent rise in mental cases and this is not even just on the guardian on the daily trust it says concerns over hurdles to mental health care in nigeria now in celebrating world mental health day of course we tell people it is safe to speak up you should not die in silence but do you think that the government also have a hand in this whereby frustration and hardship is making people go into depression because now you cannot just afford the basic necessities of life i, I saw you smiling so you they speak this english hello <laughs> sir i want to you they speak this english if you come out first <laughs> you need hmm. to go and listen to them. Mm. because if they like you you will speak the real english okay sir you, you, what are we saying? The word depression. Now we get depression. Our government did that house depression. Our depression said they affect on that nature. Oh, goodness. So, what are we saying? We get depression. So, they, anywhere we go, the first thing they will ask from where? They won't ask. They want to say Nigeria. Nigeria is a different continent <laughs> inside continents. What do they talk? Mm. When you hear Africa, Africa is a continent. Either you are from Ghana, you are from Sierra Leone, you are from Libya, you are from Liberia, you are from South Africa, it's wherever you are coming from. They will see you as, okay, you guys are Africa, man. And they watch out for television. Now, I, I watch film a lot, you know, all these funny news. But when it comes to Nigeria, the way that they accept us, celebrate us, man, on crime. Because man. of what we Social, go through? Man. Mm -hmm. A continent now with the deep stress for other world. 
Come on for that line. Let's discuss something else. What do we know? We this is a country that the Christ, when would they tell two parts? When you both go down die without atomic bomb, they will die. Talking of there are news we don't even need to talk about uh the Nico International Day, the Nico Walking Walking Day. What what the one when I carry for headset? If some president outside this country carry and they don't die, you just say, I mean, he just got to his room, outbreak, just kill them. I beg you. But how do you think the, how do you how do you think? How do you think the government can, you know, help Nigerians more? Because something I spoke about earlier on was we need empathetical leaders that are putting policies in place, knowing that, you know, See, this would president. affect people. President, go leave. Wait to president, go leave. Make us speak with you. Our president, go leave, go rest. You see, they, you see they, if they give order, mm. <laughs> they approve. They, they approve position. I said Nigeria, what's in this thing, eh? Would you just relax? Follow the flow, you know? Follow the flow. The only time we are, our reasoning is meaningful mm. is when we have national sports. You understand me? Right. We are thinking it's completely different. Why? We've been wired this way. So are you saying that, that are you saying that this is how we all have to be and we just have to accept, you wait, know, the status quo right now? Wait, wait. Wait now, this is a country where somebody wants to commit suicide. Police go arrest and then go go lock up. Charge them to court. Because you are so you a property of the state. So, of course, you cannot end the life okay. because you're that's, also... That, 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 is, that is the way you sanitize ours. That is the way we sanitize ourselves. Whereas, where you borrow this, you borrow this system of government for co called democracy, you want to kill yourself. The government is begging you. As they are picking you up, they are they are they are, they are sanitizing your reasoning, your thinking. Yeah, putting you so in a facility. You know mm. you, for Nigeria, for Nigeria, you want to kill yourself. They will tell you you want to escape from this problem we are sharing together. You must be mad. Oh yeah, can you is your is your way? What are we saying? We don't have an organized human being anymore. I believe we still we still have some. But we just pray that God, that is the only thing we either you love you love pastor, either you say you don't you are a chosen one or you are not a chosen one. If either way you like it, you still need this God to come and deliver us. We are in a big mess. How do you want how do you want where, where do we I just to? wonder I wonder how we're how going to I wonder how we're going to get out of this because I mean I'd said this earlier, we are in a crisis. And no one is really talking about it. It seems everybody is just going with the flow, like you said. Anything that comes, that's fine. But at what point, at what point, let me land, sir. At what point do you think that Nigerians will start to demand for a better country, a better nation, or a better standard of living, especially with the fact that our life expectancy right now is 56 years old because of all of the things that we're facing. At what point do you think Nigerians are going to rise up to the challenge to these people and say, no, we definitely want more. We want a better nation for ourselves. Um, it's been quite an interesting conversation because, I mean, this is what most of the papers have this morning. We're talking about petrol price. We're talking about the NNPCL lacking accountability and transparency. We're also talking frustration and hardship leading people into dis depression, especially with world mental health health day and it's quite unfortunate and i think we're just going to go through other papers um if we still have mr shola on because another thing here well it talks about um confusion as senate insists on full local government autonomy i thought this was a conversation we've already had and if we're saying that we have three tiers of government we expect there should be the federal government who controls their own funding we have the um, state government who would do the same as well as the local government but yeah most you know gov most governors definitely want to be able to rule the affairs of even the local government as well um we still have other ones here okay yes on the punch as well it says senate falls governors fresh move on local government allocation another report here says sustainable government borrowed 6.45 billion dollars from world bank and that is a report um here and i'm just wondering we keep borrowing money we keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and what are we using those monies for because we're in we're, we're in a huge debt 
But then we're not even seeing infrastructures being done. I know the Lagos to Calabar Highway has already, you know, been commissioned. But what else? What are we using these monies for? Meanwhile, the lives of Nigerians are not even getting better. So I would understand if you're saying we're trying to invest into, you know, the manufacturing industry. We're trying to create jobs for people. We're trying to ensure that everyone has a better standard of living, but we're not we're not seeing that as, at all. Um, another story here on the punch says not central PDP caucus presents Damagon's um, replacement October 24. So we've seen a lot, um, you know, with the PDP, even in River State as well, there's been this whole ruckus between um, Wike and um, Fubara. And, you know, there's just been a lot with, you know, the, the, the PDP right now. Uh, on the punch, it also says River CP visits raise local government secretariat as probe begins. So, there's just there's just a lot happening in Nigeria at the moment, but I'm sure that things will get better. I mean, that's what we always hope for. I know it might seem like wishful thinking every time we say, "Oh, it go better, things will get better." Um, let's just keep hoping. But I mean, that's all we have right now. The hope we just have to keep it alive and um, just just hope that one day, you know, Nigeria will be better and the Nigeria that we wish for ourselves. It will come to pass and we would see it. It would not just be too long. It would not tarry. But we'll start to see dividends of democracy. We'll start to see better standard of living for Nigerians. We'll start to see where, you know, the basic necessities, we can just get that. We'll start to see systems that work for us. Hopefully, that will happen really, really soon. That's it for our um, Off the Press, where we take global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we're looking at our first hot topic. So please stay with us.